Anyway, that's what the youth is looking for. You know, they have all that excitement, that passion, the love of rock and roll. I don't think that changes, you know, whether you're seven years old or not. You know, and, and I think that they're finding it in those classic records, whatever that might be. You know, they're finding, even my son, you know, they, you know loves pop punk music right now. Whereas they're digging deeper and deeper and deeper, they're finding Iggy Pop. They're finding The Clash, The Sex Pistols, The Ramones, you know. They're digging deep, you know, and uh, they're, they're, they're searching. They're, they're wanting to find something substantial, you know. And uh, there again, I think the two can come together and create something wonderful. I mean, rock and roll is about, it's a lifestyle. It's a long-term commitment. It's something that's heartfelt. It's, 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 you know, but the whole, and there again, you know, I define, you know, there's something called rock and roll, but I mean, there's rock music there again. And we have, there again, we're talking about, you know, variations in genres, you know, but uh, rock and roll is a specific form of music to me. You know, I mean, it's, it's, music was meant to make you dance and feel good and happy, you know, I mean, I just, uh, it's blues driven, you know, it's melodic structures that really allow you to, uh, you know, create arrangements that really, you know, I just, you know, I think of Fog Hat when I think of rock and roll, you know, I think of, you know, I mean, I just, you know, I, I don't know, I just think of great bands like that, you know, that the world has kind of just cast aside, you know. So that's what I hope to do with Rock and Load Show, you know, have, you know, you can have Fog Hat on there one day, followed by maybe Paramore. You know, I mean, uh, that's a wonderful thing. Nashville has Paramore, you know, Kings of Leon out of Mount Julia, Tennessee. You know, I mean, there's, 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 there's rock and roll here. There's things going on. It's just a matter of all of it coming together. And, um, you know, which is, I'm really hoping for, for Nashville. I think Nashville has a lot of uh, potential. It's, 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 I think they are positioned to become a music mecca. And I know they're trying to. Uh, they really are trying to. Um, but they're going about it in a way that I don't think they'll reach their out the desired outcome. I mean, uh, you know, I just don't I don't foresee that. I mean, j just by looking at some of the things that they're involved with with, with their ads and all of that, I just don't think. Uh, so, but but all those tools and pieces are here and it can be done. And um, I mean, we'll do everything we can to do that. So, but. Uh, Anyway, <laughs> that's good. Again, we'll go back and pull it all together. Um, yeah. Talk about, um, you know, you're giving if you're giving advice, you know, some some young guy is saying, and there's so much we could talk about. I mean, and maybe. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. No, that's I got plenty of plenty of tape. That's what's great. Yeah. I got five, six, four, five, six hours of this stuff. So <laughs> unless all you right. can out talk that, you probably we, we probably could. We could. Um, but talk about, you know, again, you know, maybe maybe a little history. What happened to the music? You know, where, where was it? Because, you know, music mo used to be whoever, what made it great is, is a group of people coming together and who they were. Right. They were able to take that with them. It wasn't like, we need to make you into this. Right. So now it's become a manufacturing process right. of, well, we need to conform you and imagize you and, and brand now this personality. We're not branding the music. Right. The music's not classic anymore. You're trying right. to. Make, you're really saying it's all about the personality right, right. versus being, and it's this put on personality. You don't right. have many Johnny Cashes no. who wake up every day and he was Johnny Cash. If you them. look at every one of those artists, I think you know. If you look back at the artists that really truly make a difference in society, or touch the lives of individuals, they were individuals. They did not care about radio. They did not care about. They didn't even care about butts and seats. You know, you got Eric Clapton hanging out with some guys on a front porch, someone just jamming. They didn't care. They just went to the bars and played. There's a difference between that. Today we're in a silicone titty kind of a way. But anyway, can't say that, can we? No, I'm just, just funny. Hey, silicone is silicone. We are in a plasticized society, you know, where we want to get there as fast as possible. We want to make it look good, but there's no feel. So, I mean, it's just what it is. I mean, the artists of the past that made their way through society were bands that they found themselves first and foremost. They didn't care whether they played in front of the mirror or just grabbed the guitar and played or played in front of a hundred thousand people. It was irrelevant. They got together because it was something they had to do. It was their life. It was something they needed to do. Now whether they got a record deal, in fact most of them weren't even seeking record deals. A lot of times it was because the media and the, or the, excuse me, the market found them and said, hey, you know, let's let's play this record, let's play this Beatle record, man. You know, let's let's play let's you know this, this phenomenal record. 
They play the record. A bunch of folks love the record. Next thing you know, some other DJs listen to that record. He starts playing that record. Next thing you know, you got grassroots. You got people all over the country playing that one record. You know, Alan Freed and all these other guys that were out there playing, you know, records. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, it's what it is. Now, though, it's the complete opposite. MySpace has become that. Facebook and all these other social media type things, uh, you know, uh, Reverb Nation have become those outlets. That's how kids are finding these records. Through video games, Guitar Hero, Rock Band, you know, Tony Hawk, all those times, you know, those types of things. The kids are finding that. Kids, I don't mean to say that, but, you know, but today the bands aren't that way. Most bands that I've seen, uh, and for one, you know, it's not conducive. I know Nashville's really not you know, set up for that. It's not really a live town. I mean, it's not really a live venue town. It's a singer-songwriter. You know, it's writer's nights every, every club in town. But there's really no venue for bands to go out and play and rip it up all the time. I mean, you, you can do that, like, say, at, uh, at uh, Rocket Town, which is a cool place. I mean, I love it. You know, there's a bunch of... You got all these 14, 15, 16-year-old boys, man, jamming and playing, you know? I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. They don't care where they get a record deal. They care about being endorsed, though. That's important. But, <laughs> but anyway, all I have to say is that, you know, bands in the past truly, um, they found their way by performing, by playing. They found themselves. They wrote their own music, you know? And what they did was touch the nerves of their own audience, and their audience found them. Uh, but, like I said, not to be redundant, but today, you, you listen to interviews, just Google, you know, no names mentioned, but just Google some of the American Idol winners and listen to those interviews. You'll know where they come from. When someone asks them, what, what, you know, what made you decide that this is what you wanted to do or needed to do with your life? Well, man, when I saw the lights, or man, when I saw that stage, and I did that, you know, to me is when it pricked my soul. It's something I had to do since a little boy. It's irrelevant. The rest of it became a moot point. Uh, why else would bands go out and do this thing for free or for, for, for you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 years uh, for free and never, you know, go, you know, they'll go to their grave, you know, doing it. It's not because of the lights. It's not because of the stage. It's, it's about none of those things. It's about their soul. It's, it's who they are. They wake up in the morning and that's who they are. It's their life. It is what it is. And, uh, the, you know, but I mean, those bands uh, really, you know, I have much respect. And uh, there again, this market is 66 to 77. You're not going to veer from it. it. It shakes a lot of trees. It shakes a lot of the talent, you know. And uh, that's why these, like I said, uh, these, these young folks are finding these bands on their own. It's not because mom and dad, uh, you know, I mean, youth is rebellious to begin with. They don't care. In fact, if you, you know, don't want to do something, just do it. <laughs> they're gonna go against it, so uh, you know. So they're they're finding this music on their own, but uh, we have become a marketing machine. We figure, boy, this will sell because it looks good or it's packaged well, and we just get a bunch of Diddy songs and we add it on there, you know. And it's not it's not the way it is. Even in the pop market, the pop culture, you know, the whole Disney thing. I mean. Today, people are still listening to the Jackson 5. They're still, you know, I had this conversation with a, with a record executive one day, and, and uh, he mentioned this one particular artist, a young person, and, uh, you know, and I asked him, well, what's the criteria of, you know, what are the parameters of why you think this individual is good? Well, their age. And he said, well, they were 17, I and mean, that's the, the age. So I said, okay, that's cool, that's your criteria. They're phenomenal because of that. Now, I'm not taking away with the fact that they don't touch the lives of a variety of people and they're being, uh, you know, a positive effect in, in a society. But when we were talking, the question was that you can't define what is good or what is bad. So that, that only qualified the question. You can't define what is good and what is bad. And I said, you can define what is good and what is bad. You know, a lot of things influence people's lives. I mean, McDonald's does that. I mean, people, you know, they can drive people to a market and have a positive effect and this and that. But anyway, the qualifier was the age. So I said, okay. So I named this person. And then I said, uh, Stevie Wonder. I named this person. And I said, Michael Jackson. I named this person. And I said, the Partridge Family. I named this person. And I said, you know, so on and so forth. You know, uh, Frank Sinatra. You know, if, if 17 is the, you know, or, or Leanne Rimes or Billy Gilman, and I'm just saying they all have the age qualifier. Some of them you don't see anymore. But it was, the point was, it, what is good and what is bad, okay? That's why I'm saying when you take a new artist and you force them 
or ask them gently to say who your influences are, and then I want you to hear that. I want to hear your influences. You'll know right off the bat whether they're good or bad because they have already A, B'd it. They've already qualified themselves against something. Uh, you know, for one, they said this person was an influence. Okay, then let me hear that influence in what you're doing. Do one of their pieces. Because um, that's when you can truly, so you have this one individual now next singing and performing with this other person. It's like, whoa, what was that? And it's like, you know, you can, you can actually now see the difference A and B. So, I, uh, you can tell one is manufactured, one is not. I, I guess that was the whole point. One is manufactured, one is not. And uh, can something manufactured be a positive effect on society and positive? Sure it can. I'm not saying that it cannot. But when you're talking about, there again, longevity, and you're talking about, you know, something that's uh, sustainable, m most things, I don't think you can really do that. Uh, not in, in music anyway. I mean, it has. To, it, it comes from something that is not natural. Well, not, not the right way. Uh, Non-manufacturer is what I was trying to say. That's just a natural thing. I mean, it comes from a bunch of folks who really have a, you know, something to say or something to sing or something, you know, whatever. I mean, but it comes from that. It has nothing to do with uh, any of those other things. So, anyway, I'm sorry. I'm, I feel like I'm talking the old circle.